Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my new and old friends. Welcome. Let's talk about some alchemy, some spiritual alchemy. I'm Cindy Carter, an intuitive, an artist, an energy healer, and a spirit consultant. This series of alchemy podcasts on Sundays are my gift to you. I'm, I'm just bringing new ideas for transmuting the energy within you with compassion and helping you remember yourself as divinity. Last podcast, we talked about spiritual reset, how it's time to reset your spiritual view of your spiritual nature, your spiritual direction, checking through and being discerning. We can all be reset into a new pattern that's more loving and more loving to our soul. We talked about how it's time to rest and how it's time to in view our entire past, present, and future. Coming into a knowing that you are more than the stories and more than the influences of your past. That you come into a new perspective of the life known as you. And when you, when you do that, you witness yourself, your frequencies, your tendencies. And by using alchemy, you reset yourself individually, and you find a new direction that's kinder and more compassionate for the soul that you have. So you can find your sovereign truth when you do a spiritual reset. Today's podcast is titled, Truth Rewired. What I'm talking about when I say rewired, I mean picking up the strands of thought and ideas about your life and their importance And you just unplug them from your body and from your brain and give them a new direction or give them a new energy to work with. The choice to displace what is not serving you. It's getting out of your mind and finding a new true north, let's say. Rewiring your ideas about life and our struggle or our successes, whatever you want to call them. It's about coming into a wholeness where our truth can be rewired. This is an important day in the journey of our soul. It'd be like rejoicing day when we actually make the choice to change our truth. You mean a choice? You're making a choice? It's like the Akashic Records. The filing cabinet is overloaded with old files and you seem to be focused only on the suffering files. Yikes. It's time to change the choice back to a known truth that's based in compassion. How do you do that? Truth rewired. Accountability could play a huge role here. Being accountable to yourself and accountable to your soul journey and your sacred soul progression. You know, not as a taskmaster, not with a lot of judgment, Not a lot of spreadsheet analysis of your process. I mean, you could take your consumer report side of your brain and give it less time in your body. For all of you very linear thinkers, and you know who you are, all of you should be wearing t-shirts that say, but how? Because you always want to know how, how it's going to work, how it's going to be, step by step. It's really hard for you to walk into the mystery sometimes. The mystery of working with the universe in a quantum fashion is what I'm talking about. The known path of known outcomes isn't happening when you have truth and trust. You don't have to have a known path and you don't have to have known outcomes. That's taking it to your future. You're trying to find a known path into your known outcome, into your known future. That's called a comfort zone. Sounds nice, doesn't it? (laughs) Well, that's not what Earth is about. It does nothing to transmute energy and your ideas of new thought. It does nothing to proliferate new life within a cell where new ideas are based in creative expression. The free flow of a cell and of a life and a mitochondria, for that matter, needs to affect your body. You see, the power of the mind is so strong that your known pathway keeps you in a tunnel of lesser possibilities, 
of lesser outcomes and lesser ability for your multidimensional aspects to be housed in your body, you know, with any wellness in mind. Linear thinking is based in the need to feel safe. What if that was taken out of the equation, this need to feel safe? You could move forward pretty quickly, I think, by rewiring the way you view something. By allowing quantum possibilities and quantum trust levels to take over your body and mind. Then while you're swimming in this energy of trust, you could catapult yourself into new timelines and new possibilities for yourself. That's rewiring your truth. That's moving energy. That's moving into clarity. To see outside your known perceptions, your known way of seeing. And when I say see, I'm talking about your multi-senses. The knowing, the claircognizance, the clairaudience, clairsentience, any way that you understand information coming into your intelligence, just do it and see it. Be aware. See the wired up thoughts that drive you. Become aware of the hatred towards another group of people, let's say. I think a lot of countries and a lot of people are witnessing that right now, a lot of hatred. I have talked in past podcasts about the division that's happening on earth, about dividing humanity and its purpose to bring you to a point of letting go of division as you're all seeing, knowing the works of dividing. It's like, duh, yeah, they're dividing. Why? Because we live in a hologram based in duality. Fear brings us right to the duality. Fear fear brings us to dueling energies, one against the other. Two energies going on at once. It's the lack of compassion. This is happening as a universe. It's happening as a galactic timeline. And as an earthship presence. And also in your body. Dual energies, positive and negative. It's a fact, Jack. (laughs) I mean, it's science. We can't alter that part. So if this is the basis of understanding and awareness, that can you possibly see yourself also within this duality? That your body structure, the intelligence within the light and sound that make your template, that this understanding is of both positive and negative ions, that play to create an ideal housing for obtaining balance in a body. We've got to rewire our truth. Rewire the brain. How you think is your biggest limitation when you're limiting your exposure to universes of clarity. Our bodies need rewiring just to give them a rest, give them a break from the constant onslaught of information. Electrical energy, DNA-altering microwave radiation. We need nurturing. But who's going to do it? It's not like you're going to open an envelope, you know, at the mailbox. It says two free passes to the Falala Day Spa. You can revive yourself. Oh, you know, well, you might get that. But if, it, if you don't get that, you know, the free passes, and you can't afford a day spa, what do you have to do? Make a choice. You know, you got to sit with it. Sit with your excuse or just do something. Make your own day spa. A choice to nurture yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. So many options that cost little to nothing. If Babylonian money systems are your worry, your focus, your concern, your detriment, your demise, your whatever fill in the blank you would like here, I mean... I'd love that, but I'm not rich, you say. You can create the energy of anything here on earth. The energy of anything. Of peace, of nurturing, of love, of joy, of calmness. Go ask a tree for assistance. No, really. There's a science behind trees and their ability to communicate with your energy field... They can bring you all of those things. They can assist you with all those things. Whatever the issue has become for you, whatever your suffering choice of the day is, it's like it's 
soup. Suffering choice of the day with a side of denial. (laughs) I don't know. Or you may be declared lifetimes of suffering. Instead of just a day of suffering, you know it's that issue that you have that you put in a big red folder on your desk. Yeah, you know that one. The one where you announce everywhere that it's the thing, the most important thing, the one we look at directly with our energy field, the issue of I can't be happy or healthy or spiritual until my job gets better or until I find a better place to live, or until I find a new friend. Well, this is really the I can't folder. I can't do anything until my issue is fulfilled. Who gifted you this issue? Who made it so daunting? I mean, this red folder has some power over you, doesn't it? You could just stall out right here with your red folder on your desk and not be able to look any further into your other colorful files, For that file system, you know, that says freedom, did you forget? Or the file that says it's all you for dummies. That file that says I love me. You know, that one's like fell down behind the rest of the other files. Waiting for life to change. You could sit with that red folder and wait for life to change around you. That's called the disempowerment folder, really. Waiting for the universe to gift you something for all your hard self-work. Now obsessed with healing and still creating your never-ending battle after battle for being healed today. I got to heal. I got to heal. No, you don't. You just got to change. Change your thought. Change your idea. You can make a choice to look into the entirety of you. Your multidimensionality and your ability to accept new growth without playing the victim to your life, that seems like a lot, right? Well, what I'm saying is, you created the quagmire, you need to create yourself out of it. This requires trust. The universe must be trusted. Your higher self can be trusted because you got to remember you. Forget. Sometimes you forget about these whole filing systems, the whole filing system that represents your wholeness, your vast qualities of sacredness and awareness. But when you're only looking at your one limiting idea, your one aspect of life, like I'm obsessed with my process, I'm obsessed with my emotions, my heartaches, the past person or the thing that was responsible for all that, It's all right here in my red folder, in my need to figure it out, to be the one in control of the world I live in. Well, here I am in all my suffering and pain in my red folder. Time to rewire. You could rewire this whole office structure, for goodness sake, change the whole filing system from limited, manipulated, controlled narratives to a broadened and more expansive system of allowing new judgment (laughs) called non-judgment. Put down the red folder for your new ideas. Then let the body and emotions and mind come into this new idea. Say you want world peace. Well, great. Then can you be peace right now or later today or in an hour or maybe after seven if if it's okay? Or, Or if that doesn't work, maybe on Sunday morning? I mean, can you, you know, alert me when you're in peace? Because it seems to be so elusive (laughs) sometimes. But remember, as the alchemist, you need to just sit down and go to work with the energies present and the energies needed to change this up. Rewire the threads. Rewire the choice that holds you and binds you to these limiting life streams, limiting your joyful interactions. Here's where the alchemy of life comes into play. The alchemy of allowing a new thought and a new choice. That you can look beyond your process and see the other files. See all those colorful arrays of other ways to respond to the same old thing. The other ways to have an emotional response. Could you go through these files or remember who you are at the deepest soul level? Because that is what counts right now. And I'm not talking about pouring over your past lives. I'm talking about remembering who you are. 
as sacred. Not just the red folder of your limited idea. I'm talking about quantum lives and quantum views and quantum consciousness. I know that many of you want to change and upgrade your life or your immune system. I mean, I for one want to do that. And my nervous system and my adrenal system. Well, I've come to learn that my actually participating and activating my choices to see beyond the limitation of my own mind brings me new experiences, literal experiences in changing and upgrading my immune system or my nervous system or my adrenal system. These are new dimensions of thought and experiences brought into the body as energy and expression and activation as a universal whole. This is literal. It gives you exactly what the soul essence has lined up for you in a quantum way for the body structure to inhabit or embody or just be. So you see, no matter what's going on in your life, or even on your televisions full of lies and manipulated mass media, no matter the influences of other groups or other people's ideas towards you, you have to rewire yourself out of it. You can't wait for it to happen around you. It does no good to wire yourself without the understanding of compassion because the heart knows if you're wiring up into, say, some faction of life that's really difficult and challenging physically, emotionally, and mentally, then I'll ask, well, why are you there? What does your own heart say about the soul that you are in that environment? If it says you don't need to be there emotionally, then get out. You don't need to be there physically, then get out. You don't need to be there mentally, then get out. Get out of that you know, rewired or that wired part and rewire it so it doesn't affect you. Rewiring the levels of importance that you give the red file or any file for that matter from an observer based in the ever presence of the source within you, God's source within you, it does guide you into right places. Even if you don't like what's happening there, Let your soul and your heart receive the blessings of the universe and give your mind a big back fat break, a big old siesta. Let that overactivity, that dominant energy of not so nice thoughts, that monkey mess mind, let it bow now to the heart. Rewiring back into an organic timeline where the heart can view all things, can view the red file. And and its response to the red vial is compassionate, more loving for the choices displayed, giving it lesser importance, rewiring to the heart space, rewiring to compassion, away from hatred, away from the news of hatred, away from the displays of hatred, allowing the world to display its darkness without your thread of suffering put into it. Please don't allow your body to be putting out matching energy to a hatred or disgust or anger. You're just feeding an archon system of right and wrong and duality. We could be feeding a collective consciousness of wholeness with loving thoughts for all human choices, for our own past choices, and our, you know, we would be freeing ourselves from the confines of living within a body or a mind of suffering. Seriously, how do you think a monk responds to things? This is how you need to see the positive, negative, neutral aspect of energy expression. Like a monk. A monk knows when to utilize the highest of energy. And also knows when to utilize strength and calmness in environments where others may be losing their minds. The calmness is the witness. The calmness is the cure. The neutral, ionic expression has harmonized any energy disruption for the mind and the body. It comes from you. Harmony comes from you. Not from the outside environment. From your ability to rewire the mind back to your truth. Harmony and truth go hand in hand. How much activation of harmony are you actually putting energy towards your focus, your everyday moments? How many moments do you actually choose for harmony? 
I bet very little if you look at it. I'm actively engaged in harmony every day for my soul. How much rewiring are you actually doing? Ask your heart how it feels about the thing that just pissed you off. I bet you're, you know, you'll get a different feeling from your heart, a different idea. You could take this new feeling and new idea and rewire your mind so you won't go back into suffering when a new thought of upliftment comes. It could be just a nice little thing like your spiritual window shopping. What's next? Nice thought. But what's next is to sit down and work with your own thoughts and ideas the way you talk to yourself and simply rewire it. Talk differently. Think differently. Just do it. Unplug the madness. And plug into the peace. I mean, I could come up with a hundred different stupid tools or illustrations or visuals for you to unplug your madness and rewire your life. I could call it something and put a big TM on it and make a bunch of money. Or you could just choose to do it like I did. Just choose and the universe will support your choice when you trust yourself and trust the universe's God source within you. Life does get easier when you can see your choices and your thoughts clearly. (laughs) I do have one more opening in my mentor program. And this kind of work is what we do. We unplug and rewire. Give less importance to things. It's a Zoom video call that I have with you each week to work out the details of your rewiring. We do that with your mind and your body, reorienting into alchemy, everyday alchemy. And it's proven to be very powerful for several people. If you need a reference, I'd be glad to give you a few. I can only work with a handful of people at a time because I am compassionate to myself and have to disconnect. But this could be your chance if you contact me quickly. Um, If you're interested, I do have uh, one space left. I do have an upcoming class in St. Louis. There are just a few seats left in this class, literally. It filled up very fast. People in St. Louis and around St. Louis are... Uh, actively into energy healing. So this class is November 8th through 10th. It's a actually a two-day certification workshop called Holographic Healing. Uh, it's meant for anyone to learn how to do energy healing on themselves and for others. You walk away from one of these very intense workshops with the understanding of rewiring the body and mind. It's a powerful way to bring peace to the body peace to the mind. So contact me if you're interested. I do travel to teach these classes. If you have people interested in your area, let me know. We just need a, you know, a minimum amount of people and some massage tables and we're ready to go. So my hope is that the energy of peace and clarity be yours today. That by rewiring your mind, you're rewiring yourself back into wholeness, away from suffering, and into the idea of loving service to the soul, and choosing another idea. Happy rewiring, and many blessings.